am not Pat Reiser. Sorry to say Pat's not here tonight. He's busy with the soccer game. So I've got to take his spot here and get all giggly and all the stuff that he does to open the show. But I uh, uh, can't say that Saturday night was uneventful. We had a couple of things happen, a couple of big delays in the feature, and um, uh, unexpected delays that got us done a little bit later than we wanted to. But congratulations at the end. At the end of the day, congratulations to uh, Anthony Prego, Brian Crummel, and Mike Vigiletti uh, for their wins in the, uh, their divisions. It was a, it's actually a great night of racing. Uh, the track was, again, really super racy and fast and, and multiple grooves. So I, I can't say that was a bad night at all. Fantastic. So our hard chargers for this past weekend were for small blocks. Hold on a second. Maybe I should introduce oh, you. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I forgot to do that. Uh, because Pat's not here tonight, Christina's come in. Christina was uh, uh, Miss OCFS in 2018. Yep. And you agreed to fill in for Pat. Sure. Glad and to be here. Appreciate, appreciate you being in here to fill the spot in Thank the last you. minute. And uh, now I get, get you to go ahead and do your sure, second Sure, absolutely. So last week's race is our hard charger award, small block goes to Danny Creedon. He went from 21st to 5th. Sportsman was Joe Benetti, 27th to 5th. Great job, guys. So again, like I said, the, the track editions were really good this week. And uh, uh, you know, I, I think that people should come out this week and see what we've got going on here. I mean, the racing's been fantastic. The buzz on the street's been really good for the drivers as far as the, the racing goes and, and how they feel about the track. And um, Saturday, for, for a change, it's supposed to be fairly warm in the upper 60s. On Saturday afternoon, I know everybody knows it was, uh, I think it was 48 degrees at game time on, on Saturday, so it was a little bit chilly. It's still April. Uh, we've been fortunate we, we haven't had any rain, but uh, at the end of the day, 60 to 48 degrees at game time yeah. is a little chilly. So. Once that sun goes down, especially if you're sitting up in the grandstands and you get that breeze, it just it just gets cold and you need your blanket and your extra sweatshirts. So. Yeah. We're fortunate that we have a drive-in. So. You know, I've noticed that a lot of people have opted to go in the drive-in, stay in their car, stay warm, stay warm. if they need to, uh, versus uh, versus sitting in the grandstand and put, you know putting up with the elements. But uh, you know, and I, I often wonder: is it because the 31st lap wasn't open a couple of weeks ago, and they feel like the the uh, drive-in might be a better option? They could bring I their mean, own beer. You can grill. You can <laughs> BYOB. I mean, we're. I think it might be something to do with that. Yeah, we're bleacher creatures. I mean. Those fans that like to sit up in the bleachers, we just like to be up there. The view is incredible. So for me, I prefer the view of the grandstands. Right. Um, but that's always been my spot. And I'm just thrilled that this season we're back in person in the stands. It's just so great to be back up it there. It is, right? And now, uh, actually, actually, the 31st lap, it's actually open now. Yes. We got that open. And uh, there are some restrictions. But, I mean, basically, it's open, you know, as we normally know it. Um, and it's only going to continue to get better. I mean, they announced, um, I saw that they announced that Madison Square Garden is going to like yep. 50% by the middle of May um, for the, the NBA playoffs. So I think things are you know, just continue to get better. And uh, and so, I mean, essentially, we're, we're open for business. So yep, got to be eating and drinking, folks, though, if you're at the lap. Eating right? and drinking is the key. That too, right? And uh, But, you know, we have, we have tickets available at the gate now, and uh, and obviously we have plenty of room in the drive-in. Yep. It's one thing that makes this place good and bad is that it's 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 – Got, there's a lot to manage here because you got, you're trying to play to both sides of the fence here, both sides of the racetrack when you're you know presenting a show like Victor Lane's on this side, but the back stretch is on that side. But the driving is a great luxury to have, and uh, we're just you know we're just fortunate to have that. Yeah, and it's great too for families and kids because they can come with their kids. Their kids can run around. They can bring their dog if they're leashed. So it's a nice outlet for families. It is, and and, and it's another thing that reminds me of uh, uh, to remind people that you know as we get closer to the summer and the kids want to get out. Um, on the weekends, kids are free. Twelve yeah, is free. Yeah, kids are free. And this is something that you and I have talked a little yes, bit about last year. Yes, we have year, talked about, about that. Once we get up in full song going here, that that uh, we're going to reinvent the uh, kids club, and I think that you've agreed to help us. With I that. would love to do that. As someone that's in the field of education, it's great. We have to start with our youngins, and they have to start loving racing from the very beginning. Yeah. And we got to catch them all the young. Got to yeah. get them to the races and get them to really enjoy it and love it. That would yeah. be great. I've always, I've always said that. Uh, you know, racing in families is a little bit like hunting. You know, if, yes, if, you, exactly. if you grew up in a family that hunts, you're usually a hunter. If you grew up in a family that, that's in racing, you usually end up liking racing or being involved in racing somewhere down the road. And, um, you know, I, I've always thought that was really consistent. I see that as my career went through stages of 
uh, well, my, my parents brought me here when I was five years old, and now I'm 35, and, you know, they were your fan, and now I'm your fan, and now my kid's coming to see you, and, and you know, I've went through, you know, generations of families. Yeah, and I think of, like, the families, like the Higbees, same thing with them. Same you know, you thing, have three right? generations of racers or race car owners in that case. Right. And, and it, it just, looks like it's just going to continue on down gonna the road, right? It's just going to continue on, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah for sure. So right. for for the past three weeks, we have no repeat winners at this point. But if there is a back-to-back -back winner this week, Anthony Prago, Brian Crummel, and Dylan Masson will be eligible for the Wicked Trucks Works bonus. How much was that bonus again, Brett? Well, it's uh, I think it's 500 300 and 200 Okay. Uh, depending on what division you're in. Uh, 500 for the small block, uh, 300 I'm sorry, uh, 500 for the big block, 300 for the small block. Two, one. And two, and one. Okay. That's so, fantastic. Uh, it's it's a it's 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 a nice bonus. It's it's tough to get because you know with our systems and handicap systems, uh, things get completely shuffled around. So, uh, for for in, for instance, uh, if Dylan Madsen is going to win that bonus, he's got to come from fifteenth. Right. And uh, in the in the rookie, those are the most races. exciting races, and they are right. Those hard but charger they're, awards are they're fantastic. They are, and and that, but this is very difficult, to, a very difficult award to award to win. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see if anybody can grab that. Moving forward, for sure. Um, actually, this week's uh, small block race, because some of us are getting impressed, including myself, um, this week's small block race has been up to uh, 30 laps. Uh, I know we said last week at the driver's meeting that we were considering it. Um, it has been moved to 30 laps, um, and it will be 3,000 to win. Uh, the other thing is um, we needed to get the word out that it is not in the handicap system. So it will be a draw for heat race, redraw for feature, similar to what we did on the first night. So uh, guys need to know that. So if you're an outsider or somebody that runs Lebanon Valley with a small block or any other track that's not running, uh, not running yet, that you can come down here and have a fair shake. You're not, you're not going to be handicapped in any way, shape, or form. You're going to come here on uh, equal, equal ground with everybody else. Have a great night and run for three thousand dollars for a small block race. We've seen some nice course. turnout from some of these outside invaders. That's really kept it very lively watching to have them come yeah. down to the track and be out there racing and guests are regulars. It's really made it fun. Well, when I look at um, when I look at our car counts, um, our car counts here are, are extremely healthy uh, compared to other tracks. And I don't know if it's the location or uh, or what it is, but I mean we have no problem with car counts. That's for sure. And. Uh, and uh, we've, we're seeing now, you know, um, some more outside guys coming in. Uh, we're seeing um, more big block guys that are going to come in for these the next round coming up here right. in May. Um, the Joey Falanga Memorial, um, which is coming up on May 1st. Uh, we also call it the Big Block Derby. And we've already got confirmation from um, Max McLaughlin will be back. Okay. Um, Matt Williams is supposed to be back. Oh. Peter Britton's called and said he's probably going to be back. Ooh, that makes so, me happy. That's going to be an exciting race. So, yeah, so it's going to be a lot of those guys you saw on opening night. Now, some of them have other commitments. Depends on, you know, what they're running for local uh, points. Matt Shepard, I believe, is going to be back. Um, they're, they think pays 25000 to win. And uh, it's an elimination format. So the only guy that's really locked into that format right now is, is, uh, is uh, Tommy, Meyer. Tommy Meyer. Thank you. Um, but these guys have either got to win this race or win a race or accumulate enough points to move into the next eight. So if and they win, win that race, back. that's they're it for in. them. They're locked in, they're which locked is, in. I mean, that's a great incentive for anyone to come down to the shock yeah. as an like, outside Like leader. I told Tommy, you're, you know, you're, you're locked in. You can take the rest of the summer off or at least part of the summer off and come back. No, I don't think July Tommy's going to do that. No, the, way he, the way he ran, I think he's coming back. I'm he's coming sure. back. Yeah. Um, but uh, so that's, you know, that's coming up really, really, really quick. Um, so for this week too, we have the rookies are back for their second show. Mm -hmm. At the opener, we had 21 car count, which was absolutely fantastic. So based upon that increased car count, we're going to be looking at a 15 lap feature for the rest of the season. Yeah, originally when we, you know, introduced the class in this format, um, we thought maybe we'd get 10, 12 rookies, but um, we, you know, if you have 10 or 12 cars, a 12 lap race is more than enough. But now, um, with 21 cars registered, um, we, we decided to go to 15 laps. And, and quite honestly, their first race was, was beautiful. I mean, they ran really clean. It was a good race. Um, guys were getting a lot of lap time, and that's what it's guys all about. Guys and right? girls. Guys, guys and girls. Thank you for correcting me on that. <laughs> for correcting Don't forget our ladies. That's we had uh, Alyssa and um, Dan Orden. Um, uh, Isabella. Isabella, thank right. you. Isabella. Right. And... Uh, yeah, so you know that that rookie class is all about getting lap time before they move up 
later on this summer. And uh, so we decided to go to 15 laps just to make that uh, move along quicker. And I think, you know, part of what we, what we always struggle with is the time frame. So in the, the regular show, we, we would like to get the show started. The race had started by 7. Our goal is to end by 10.30. It's a lot easier said than done. And we saw last week we would have been done by 10 or 10.15. All of a sudden we've got two half-hour delays in the feature. Now we're done at 11 or a little bit after yeah. 11. So it's a hard thing to do. But once we know that we've got the track conditions where we can do that, then we can start adding some different things and we can do a little bit more, you know, um, we can just throw a little bit more pizzazz into the show. Yeah, without, that, that'll uh, be great because I know that'll be great time. that people will want to stay for the whole show, you know, because unfortunately sometimes if you see people, they might leave early or, but if, it, if it's more timely, which is great, that'll just be even better right. for the fans. Yeah, as we move and drivers, summer, of course. Yeah, we, as, as, as we move more into the summer, we want people to be able to, you know, get done at 1030 and hang out for a little while. Not feel like they have to hurry up and go home. They can go to the lab. Hang out in the pits, whatever they want to do, right? Um, so, uh, you know, we talked, uh, we did talk a little bit about the next, uh, some of the upcoming events, uh, one being the, the May 1st uh, big block race, yep. when the big blocks come back for the Joey Falanga Memorial Race. Um, that race is now uh, 4,000 to win, thanks to their contribution. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting night of racing. With so the, you had you know, mentioned before blocks. when we were talking about Tony Falanga put an extra thousand dollars in there, yes. which is just phenomenal because yeah. it's in honor of his son. Yes. So that's going to be a yeah, really nice I race. I mean, it's such a, a great racing family, um, big supporters of Orange County. Uh, oh, absolutely. Like we, like we all have been. And, and uh, um, sad way, sad sad thing that we have to talk about that in the, in, in the way that we do, but um, that they, they, they still maintain the, a great uh, relationship with the Speedway and, and in their involvement with their with their other son racing sportsmen. So... Um, we're looking forward to that. That will be May 1st. And then on Friday night, not to change the subject from racing too much, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, Friday, May 7th, uh, will be the first in a series of um, car shows. Classic cars, antiques, rods, street rods. So is all, it like anything, can, anything and anyone can enter? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Okay, pretty that's much. pretty cool. Um, and... The, it'll be built around the 31st lap where we have, you know, cars and we're work, we worked on, on some uh, drainage issues this week up here uh, where, you know, we'll have different parking areas for the cars. And it, it just sounds like a lot of fun on a nice Friday night to come out here, you know, have a, have a couple of beers and walk around, look at cars. And, and uh, there'll be a $250 uh, best in show award. And, and what I, from what I understand, it, it's actually, uh, it's actually, um, um, uh, what was I going to say? It's, it's, it's $250 best in show, but it's actually eligible. Bikes are eligible as well. So it's it, not just it's cars. It's pretty much it's a, everything. It's a door prize, $250. So any any car that enters is eligible for okay. $250. Or, or a bike, for that matter. Or a bike. From what they, they so told is it me, just right? So is it just the best in show in order? Are they doing divisions for different types of cars? Uh, I'm not exactly sure on all okay. the details, but I know there are some divisions too, right, Jake? Correct. There'll be division awards, but the the... The prize, the two hundred and fifty dollars prize, will be a random draw of all entered cars. Okay. So, okay. so it's anyone's game. It's anyone's, anyone's game. game. Anyone right. could leave with two hundred and fifty bucks. Any old jalopy. And it's only like a fifteen dollars entry. That's, yeah. And it runs from five p.m. till nine p.m. on a Friday night. And kids can come out with their families, take pictures with the cars. And you can win Orange County Fair Speedway tickets at the event. Wow. Okay. Okay. Great. And a DJ. And a DJ and a band. Gotta live, be, gotta live have music, music of live music, right? Oh, that's a great so, Friday night. Yeah, it sounds like a great Friday night. I think I might have to come. <laughs> <laughs> and then coming up after our car show, Sunday, May sixteenth, is going to be our next motocross event. Yeah, the motocross is interesting, right? So they have a uh, they have a professional like, it's like it reminds me of like a, a golf course with a, with a pro, right? They, there's a there's a there's a full time trainer on the course, wow. and uh, I got a phone call from a guy last night that said. Uh, I've got a nine-year-old here that that does that wants to come ride. He's a dirt bike rider. He wants to come ride. Where does he start? And and uh, my answer was, you got to start. I mean, you don't have to, but uh, you, we have practice nights on every Wednesday night. But for a nine-year-old, come come with the trainer and get get a lay of the course, what you need to do, the right do the right things, and and uh, and it's a perfect way to get started on the motocross course. That's really great. So any kid, any age can go and work, or is there? Age restriction, or what's best for the kids if they're interested? Doug, in is there an age, is there an age restriction that? on the motocross? Is it seven years old, or is it less than that? 
I there's kids younger than seven. I don't know. What kids it younger than seven. Yeah, yeah. some of the so, pictures, yeah. the kids on the yeah, bike, they are five or six. They start at five or five six. So like kindergarten age. Little wow. tiny guys. Little itty bitties. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're awesome to watch. Totally awesome. Um, and then uh, on June twelfth, which is coming up sooner than we know, um, is the nostalgia night. Long awaited. Awesome. According to Doug, according to Doug Dolgarian, the long awaited nostalgia night. <laughs> Two years in the two year. years in the yeah. waiting, yeah. and uh, and uh, that's always a huge huge event. I mean, we have tons and tons of old uh, uh, drivers from the Speedway fans love to see. The, oh my the gosh, old cars. the autograph line! If you want an autograph, you need to get online. Yeah. You need to get here early. Yeah, we, so we'll be we'll be announcing the, the drivers as we get into uh, into May as to who will be here. But will you be signing autographs again? You know, I never did that yet. You, because I was always racing somewhere else. I have else. an autographed poster for me. I'm thinking maybe it was Eastern States, though. It could have been Eastern States. It could have been States. Eastern States. But it was I, Eastern States. I did be signing. He's I signing, will. everyone. You heard it. He yeah. just got committed. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't retire yet. <laughs> <laughs> committed to sign. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, but that's always, that, that, the crowd's huge. I mean, there's uh, Doug put together, you know, all his uh, people with tons and tons of old race cars. And isn't this... Orange County is all about the history anyway, so. Yeah, that's um, just a fun, it's another fun night. Yeah. It's something, I know for me as Miss OCFS, that was a standout night because the kids were coming out getting autographs. You had all the drivers, you know, it was just, it's a great night. If you haven't been to Nostalgia Night, put that on your list. You yeah. have to go. Yeah. You have to go. Um, coming up after that is going to start our concert season. So on Sunday, June 27th, we're going to have Blackberry Smoke. You can call for tickets. And there are going to be some huge concert announcements coming up. So, how do you like me now? Hmm, wonder who that could be. Hmm. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> uh, we just like uh, one more footnote. Um, we want to say thanks to uh, last week's additional sponsors. Uh, money came in from Evergreen Fuels for the Sportsman Division and Rock Fantasy for the Street Stock class. And so, thanks to Bobby and Steve for their participation and uh, their contribution to the drivers uh, as we try to build bigger and better awards. Um, we still have some signage available. We have some billboards. We're putting things together. We're going to continue to build this thing as, as we get into the summer and through the season. And uh, anybody that wants to you know, get involved in any way, shape, or form, business to business, uh, we can help anybody uh, with whatever their goals are. And Pete Reynolds is the guy to do that. Right, Pete? And you tell me that. Great way to promote your business. <laughs> so definitely reach out to Pete. Yes. Get your I mean, name out there and your business out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, on that note, um, I want to know. Do oh, your uh, trivia before we bring oh, it trivia. Oh, trivia. Ooh, right. I like trivia. Okay. Is the answers on the sheets? The, this, is, <laughs> this is your chance, fans, to win some free tickets. First four people to okay. correctly answer Brett's trivia question All right. will win tickets or a live stream. Their choice. Okay, so that's the deal. First four correct answers uh, to, will win tickets uh, to this question. And the question is, who was the only sportsman driver to have his engine claimed? And by the way, it was legal. And how much time do they have to answer this? It'll be the first four to get it. And that's it. Okay. So you guys can comment now if you know the answer. But we don't have to wait. We can right. let our guests out. Uh, one, more, one more footnote. I've got a note here that uh, uh, Saturday's small block race is not in the handicap system, as we mentioned. So it is a show-up point race uh, in honor of uh, the Super Dirt Series beat at Bristol this weekend and some of our drivers participating in a, probably what could be a once-in-a-lifetime chance to run Bristol wow. uh, with dirt on it. So, That's going to be awesome. It's going to be pretty cool. If I was you, I'd be totally to excited. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Leave it in the morning. Um, so, uh, um, and it's neutral territory. That's the kind of cool thing about it. That no, it's it's an absolutely unknown territory, unknown quantity that we're all dealing with. So, when we get out there for practice on Thursday night, it's going to be uh, interesting to see who figures it out first. So there's so how many cars do they have at this point? So uh, Going what out they to Bristol. well uh, Bristol uh, they restricted it because okay. they only have 90 spots in the infield okay. for pits. Got uh, it. Unlike the race they had back in March where they took them got like, four like 12,000 uh, or with 1,200 cars they had at, at this event. Um, we got we got four winners by the way. Um, 
And uh, so this race has been restricted to uh, just 45 uh, World Outlaw Sprints okay. and 45 uh, That's still a great count. Runs. That's still a great so, count. And we're all parked in the infield, so it should be a great show. Um, should be a great show. So tell me a little bit about what your your history is with the Speedway. And how, how, do you come from a racing family? First? I do not come from a racing family, technically. Um, I grew up in Rockland County. I've been up in Orange County since 2001. Um, my significant other boyfriend, um, he introduced me to racing. He has come from a family that has always attended the races. His quote was, I've been going to Orange County since I was in diapers. I'm surprised he never drove. That was my first question. Like, you didn't drive? So he introduced me and he, you know, he said, hey, why don't you come to the races with me? I knew no better. I mean, I've watched NASCAR. So I said, sure, why not? So he took me up to Selden's Grove. It was actually the icebreaker. We got up there, got settled in, got, you know, snacks and all that. And then, yeah, you know what happened. Canceled. Right. So that was my first schedule race. But my real first race was at Orange County. Um, and like Brett was saying before, it was like a family ordeal. It would be Joey, his dad, his brother, the nephews, you know, the brother-in-law. So I went... I watched the cars go round and round. I was like, what am I getting myself into? I'm like, all right, he loves it. I love him. Right. Got to keep going. You know, he's, you got to support your significant other, whatever right. they're passionate in. So I kept going, and sure enough, after I got to know the divisions, the drivers, I just fell in love with it. And right. it just became something that I, I absolutely love. Well, there's one, thing, there's one thing I always say about that part is that, you know, um, when you come to the races for the first time and you don't really know the players, it just seems like... Eh, the cars are, they get your attention because they're so fast and right. loud and they, and you, you smell the different things that you smell, the fuel burning and stuff like that. And it's pretty interesting. But when, once you start to know the drivers, it's a different level, right? Totally different level. Right? Once I got to know the drivers and the divisions, I mean, cause I literally came in, I'm just going to be honest. I knew nothing. Right. I knew there was a track in Orange County and that was pretty much it. Right. But you know, the divisions, the drivers, then you start knowing, okay, points, where are they in points? And you know, right. if so-and-so wins this week, where we're at. Right. So then it becomes really interesting. And then you start rooting for certain drivers right. and it really, you, you get kind of and, 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 and you And you develop like, uh, uh, you kind of know their style. Well, this guy's going to run on the high side. This guy's yep. going to run crazy. This guy's going to be a little reckless. This guy's going to be very conservative, but he's going to be fast. And, and you know, everybody has their own little style and, you, and their own little innuendos, and you start to get used to that. And that's how you become a fan of one guy or another. Some yep. people like the guy that's crazy, and some, some guys <laughs> like the guy that's calculated. You know, <laughs> right? You know, like a little bit of all, actually. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, that's, a, that's the hook, right? So... That's really, you know, like we talk about doing the kids club and we talk about different things. That's really the thing that I would like to develop the most is, is, is to develop that, you know, uh, pe for people to know the drivers better. And it's just the challenge is to try to do it in that three and a half hour period. It's hard to do. So, you know, hopefully we can do some things, you know, once we move into the summer when people are here a little earlier, try to get the drivers out to see the people you know, before they start hot laps or whatever. We're going to try to make that connection happen again. I, I know I... You know, hearing from fans and talking to fans, they would love, the one thing they would love, especially if they have kids, is to meet the drivers. Right. So even if we had a night where maybe, I know it's hard strategically, but maybe we had a night where the pits opened up and they could be in the pits just to take an inside look. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a vlog, which I've pushed out um, some information on my Facebook and Instagram. Um, so I'm actually going to be interviewing Isabella, who's going to be running in the rookies this week. And I want to give an inside look because I think that's the one piece the fans right. don't get to see. And I know as Miss OCFS, we get to go in to the pits. And that's something the kids would enjoy, the right. parents would enjoy. What if we What if we took all the cars and we put them out in the front straight radio, like Le Mans style, every class? I would be out there asking and, photographs. And, and, then, and, then have to have, <laughs> and then, yeah, and then have the, have the kids come I, from the grandstand, have the yeah. people come from the grandstand and spread out on the front straight I think that would be great. The drivers, the I think that would be great. Really I think it'd be safer too, mm -hmm. because it'll be a little bit more of a Control. stable... Um, place for the kids to walk, but I think that would be great. I right. mean, the better connection we can have between the fans and the drivers, the draw is going to become to the track because now they're going to know the names and the faces. Right. So, you know, I might know some names and faces or I might not, but as soon as I can make that connection between that's the driver that I saw racing, it takes it to a different level. Right. That'd be great. All right. Let's work that's on it. Idea. Let's work on that. Let's do it. All right. We can do that. So here are our winners. I have to pronounce names, I guess. Um, Austin Smith, racer. Uh, yep. Nick Massey, Steve Fairweather, and Chris Thorne. Some of these names are pretty familiar, yeah. especially yep. Chris Thorne. 
And the so, answer? And the answer is our guest tonight and sportsman point leader, Joe Brennan. Come on in, Joe. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> well, you said you were nervous. I'm yeah. Not gonna, I'm not gonna let you be. I'm not gonna let you be nervous. <laughs> All right. I think anyone that meets you gets a little nervous. Uh, nah, no, yes. you, you, you say it was because of me. Yeah. I said, oh. Yeah, it was. I've met you before. If so. I can loosen up Anthony Brago, I, I can loosen up anybody. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, so um, I didn't really, I don't, I didn't know too much about your history, but uh, your season has started out phenomenal here. Um, you started with a second on opening night, right? You came from 16th to win the second night, and you came back with a fairly consistent ninth this week after you know, moving up a little bit after the tech um, with, one, with the one DQ that we had. So uh, that's a good way to start the season, I'd say. Yeah. Three top tens, right? Definitely. A good, top threes. Good, good start. Mm -hmm. um, your 16th place to, to win, that was a, that you were spot on that night. Uh, I get to watch from upstairs now. It's pretty interesting. So, yeah. You know, and you can see the difference between how a car is going through a corner right. and not, you know? Right. Um, but um, you um, you told me it was interesting. I did, like I said, I didn't know that much about your history. And I and um, we both started our racing careers at the same place, right. just a few years apart. Cut it back. Yeah. <laughs> a yeah. few decades apart. Yeah. Right. So um, uh, you 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 are a dirt racer. You said two thousand one. Two thousand three is when 2003? I started. Two thousand three. Yeah. Okay. So two thousand three, you start racing uh, go karts on dirt. Yep. And what what brought you there to do that? Well, my. Uh, I have a family background in racing. You know, my uncle uh, George and my uncle Jim Johnson, they both raced at Cuddybackville, probably with you at some point. Right. Um, and uh, they both had stock cars. Um, on, in, I, I grew up in Bloomingburg, and uh, behind my house was Kenny Baker. He had a race car. Sure. Uh, that's where I first started helping out. Yep. Um, across the street from me was John <laughs> Finley, who had a race car. Yeah. You were so, surrounded so, by race cars so, and drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was always an engine running sometimes, so it was just Got a matter of time before, right. uh, hey, what's that go-kart there? And and, and uh, we bought John Finley's go-kart and, and started took, there. Took it up there. And yeah. Where you went. Yeah. How many years did you end up doing that? I raced go-karts uh, until 2013. Um, anywhere from uh, Florida, Charlotte, Vincennes, Indiana. Oh wow! So you traveled around a lot. A lot. You got you, you went a lot further than Cuddy Bay. Yeah, I went to uh, the pavement. I traveled the pavement national series in 2005, um, and then after graduating high school, I moved to Mooresville, North Carolina, and worked for Phantom Racing Chassis. Oh wow! Yeah, you know that. I yeah. Know that stuff. So uh, I definitely got a good background in that 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 really crazy competitive edge, and you know uh, the gray area. Is what I learned down there. So right, right. Uh, it was a good. Uh, do you know, do, do you find that do you find like that when you um, and I, I know this to be true for myself, but when I started to branch out and and look at different types of racing, that's when I really started to learn a lot about what I could apply to go back and, and apply to what I was doing here. Absolutely. Um, you know, you can say what you want about what I did in NASCAR, um, but the things that I learned there, the four years I was there, were priceless because it allowed me to come back and apply those things. In the early 90s right. to what I was doing up here right. and build cars that were light years ahead of everybody else yeah. at that point. Right? Yeah. And so, like, if you if you just stay in, and do what we do here and follow that guy over there and see what he's doing, you, you know, you, you don't, you, you're going to be competitive. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the same thing as him. Yeah. But when you take the things that you can learn from a late model or maybe a sprint car sure. or, or even a, a piece off an Indy car or a a, a, a stock car, whatever, and you can bring those things back and apply them mm. to what you know here. Yeah, uh, sometimes that can make a big difference. Absolutely. And so your exposure to different types of racing, yeah, you know, whether it be caster splits or cambers exactly. or whatever, king you know, pin inclination, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely. bring it back and apply it to what you're doing yeah. here, and you, at least at the very least, you understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Definitely, helps out a lot, right? Definitely, there. pavement, dirt, indoors. It's all a, a, a learning curve, you know. Yeah, getting more experience. Yeah. So I also heard I also heard a rumor about you um, not maybe not running in Middletown all year. You're, 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 it wasn't your intention to run your all year. Yeah, we we were not going to run Middletown this year. Uh, where, where, what were you thinking of doing? We started the year in uh, Georgetown, Delaware, and then Sounds Grove, uh, racing the Deo Series. Mm -hmm. um, we're still looking at traveling the Deo Series uh, mainly because of schedule. You know the 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 midweek races kind of fit. It gave us. Our, us, our whole crew, some weekends to kind of, you know, live a different life. 
Mm-hmm. So we're still thinking about uh, racing the day of uh, shows that are coming up. Um, but we, I don't think we anticipated coming to Middletown and being so fast out of the gate. Mm-hmm. You know, the track's been good to us. We were, you know, winners four years ago in the sportsman division, led the points then and, and kind of got, let it fade away, we'll say. Yeah. Um, but now we're on top again and the car's different now. Like we, uh, we got with, uh, Bicknell chassis over the, over the winter. And I had met, uh, Pete and Nancy Bicknell at a Tampa Bay lightning game, uh, four years ago and kind of knew then that it'd be a matter of time before we, we switch over and, and, uh, them and, and Randy Williamson have been really big helps to our program and, and, uh, it's showing right now. So. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Um, so obviously you're going to be here for the rest of the year. I, I can't say that. Oh, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, uh, we, we're kind of treating it like uh, last weekend we said, well, let's go another two weeks and, and right. see how it goes. Well, you know, the, the year that I went to Accord, I, I said the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I ran Accord one season right. um, uh, when, when Malta closed up. I went there and uh, uh, let's just go, we'll go to the opener, see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go another week. Let's yeah. go another two weeks. Yeah. And uh, before you know it, that we uh, closed out with the championship. That yeah, year. yeah. And, you uh, had some good racing got, with Scott Ferrier, if I remember. Yeah. You know, two guys were yeah. pretty fast. And, uh, and uh, so that was that was my claim to fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, one full year there and uh, and the championship. But uh, yeah, it was definitely didn't, wasn't my intention to mm-hmm. go after a championship. It was my intention to fill a couple Friday nights right. when we got into the summertime and got, sure. got traveling a little bit. Sure. You, you like to travel a lot. I have never traveled, honestly. We, I mean, I was uh, I raced in Middletown. I began racing Middletown Modifieds in 2013 and crashed really hard in a small block. That was my first experience. Uh, tore the front end off the car, and it took about two months to get back going, built, rebuild the car. So we went to Ackwood and got some good laps there, um, showed some speed. The next year, we're like, well, let's let's get a crate and let's. Uh, Let's learn. Let's learn how to corner and, and race race for inches. Where here's more about racing for feet, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did well. We won three straight at Accord and Middletown the following year in crate, and we're like, all right, well, let's we're learning. So this is a good spot for us. And then after that year, we actually got the uh, the old uh, Crummel Brian Smith ride and raced here for Brian for a year and learned a lot about Middletown. Got one win. Should have had more. But that was another stepping stone uh, with with uh, Brian's team, and that mm-hmm. was that was really good for our development. Mm-hmm. So, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, where do you get your help from? You got, you got buddies of yours? Yeah, or? my my cousin George. Uh, he's he's a huge help. Like uh, we started racing go karts. I got him into it. Uh, I apologize for that, George. Uh, <laughs> and, and he uh, he raced go karts with me. We did all the, the the traveling, the PA series and stuff, and then. Finally, I got the chance to get in a race car, had to sell all of my kart stuff to do it. And uh, I'm like, you know, I need some help. Uh, George started helping me. Um, the car it was an older car. It was it was put together okay, but it needed brakes. I brought it to my uncle George's shop and he put some brakes on it, scaled it out, and we started winning. And, and George has been in the shop, you know, three, four nights a week with me ever since. Yeah. So. Uh, That's what it takes. Yeah, with him, my, my brother JB, my stepfather Joby, and uh, recently this year, um, Kenny Baker has has joined the team. So mm-hmm. it was kind of last year. I know yeah. he helped you out he for was, a little bit. Uh, yeah, he helped me out for a little bit. And then, yeah. Uh, he was uh, thanking me for some of the things I taught him about prepping tires. He yeah. Said, tires are a yeah. thing now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. into that. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's exactly. cool. Uh, exactly. Yeah, you know, as, as you know, tires... Yeah, you could dedicate a guy to tires. I love tires. I, I I love tires. Yeah. Just, that's my favorite part of the race car. Yeah, yeah. And it's probably the most important. part. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> so, we butt heads a little bit. But yeah. That's because I care. <laughs> um, so, you know, we have this engine claim rule here, and um, it doesn't get used very often. You mm-hmm. know, um, most guys would rather you know say they, they would rather make make claims, verbal claims, than to actually claim yeah. somebody's engine. Right. Um, and haven't been in that space where you're doing really well and people, you know, doubt your legality. Um, when, when you, when they say, okay, look, we got, we got money. They're taking your engine. I mean, did you, did you feel like somebody was stealing something from you or did you feel like you had something to prove? I mean, what was your, what was your, what was your mentality when they said that to you? Like, I got to pull the engine out and give my engine away. Um, you know, it, I didn't, 
it, it didn't it didn't bother me because I was a hundred percent certain it was legal, and in a way I was kind of uh, I didn't know that the guy who claimed it was going to go and and have it taken apart to find something you know mm -hmm. look for something to say it's illegal. Um, but there was a lot of, you know, we were, we had just come back to Middletown. We were actually, we were running TO cars for the first time and we were, we were fast. We, we were winning races by a huge margin. We were like, we were top five in some big block nights and on our lap times and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was really fast and, uh, it was just a great car, great combination. Um, and so when they took the engine, it was okay. So I, I got to get another one and I got to find one in a week. Right. You know, that's the hard part. Yeah, um, we did, uh, and we got it, we got it back. In the following weekend, we won again. So it kind of it kind of quieted everyone. Um, so that was good. It, 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 in a way, that guy proved that we were legal right. for us. So it helped you. Yeah, yeah. So in the, in the, so, but I've had this. Ha I had that happen one time early on in my career where I was protested, and, and uh, it was on a day that we ran. Uh, we were running. Um, it was called New Venture at the time, which is actually Utica Rome. Okay. And it was a, that was a daytime race. Then at night, we had to go to Wheat Sports. We had to duck a double header that day. Wow. And they, they took the heads off my engine at the end of the first race oh, gosh. before I had to go race that night. Right. And so there were some hard feelings, obviously. Yeah. I, was, I was legal. Right. Um, but it kind of wrecked my day. Yeah. So, like, did you feel like it was like wrecking your day? Or did you, did you feel like, hey, you know what? If anybody has any doubts about me, if, 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 so I guess my, 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 my question is, who, 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 uh, they claimed your engine after they took it apart and found out that it was okay were there hard feelings between you and this person um not really I didn't know him well um so not really I don't have because any... I'm going to tell you sometimes people do that and, mm. and if they don't get if they don't find what they thought they were going to find yeah they get mad at you yeah well, uh, they could get that's what happened they I mean they published in, in Area Auto that it was actually it, it was a uh, a repaired engine but the camshaft was worn out of the thing so he he got it he he claimed a, a great sportsman engine but it's it was not a fresh engine right. it was not worth what he claimed it for right you know right. which is basically the price of a new one. exactly right yeah right but you know i don't what do you th i mean do you think the claimer rule has a place in this in this sport i do, do you think it's a good thing no i do um i don't think it is right now because there's it's hard to get crate engines right now yes like it's it there that's a consideration yeah and so i have no problem with anyone claiming my engine at all mm -hmm. i just i just want the ability to buy another one tomorrow and you right. can't you can right yeah. um it's also difficult. that the price of a claimer engine needs to go up too because it isn't what it was then right you know it's they, they've gone up in price but I don't, it doesn't bother me. I like the fact that if, you know, there are, there are engines out there probably that we race against that, that guys are still getting into, not a lot of them, but I think that claim, claimer engine rule is good for that situation. You know, if someone puts 10 grand on a crate engine and ha can have it claimed from them for 4,000. Right. That's a, bad, that's a bad investment. It is for them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mm -hmm. think that, uh, um, there's a lot of, uh, you, you know, there's a lot of importance to the keeping the integrity of the class Absolutely. correct, right? Yeah. Um, and I also think that in a lot of ways, guys will spend money on stuff that is probably mostly voodoo. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, like you know, with the crate motor, I mean, the most important thing with that thing is tuning. Yeah. You know, getting yeah. getting the, getting the carburetor uh, jets and and bleeds exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah. That's where most of the power is, and then good valve springs. Yeah. And, exactly. Um, and legal valve springs probably need to be replaced often mm -hmm. you know and so it's a lot it's, it's a little bit labor intensive yeah but i mean beyond that there really isn't a whole lot no 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 you know it's a pretty easy motor to maintenance and stuff it, like that but is. again yeah. um if you don't have integrity in the class then the class doesn't live and, exactly and obviously it, dirt's done a good job even though our our sports class isn't um a dirt car sanctioned uh, class we, we go by their rules yeah and um they've obviously done a good job or else they wouldn't have so many cars in the yeah class. i think the bottle cap seals is a good thing that's a lot harder for people the average guy to get into so right. i think that's helped with the class right and i think anybody that comes with breakaway bolts should add 50 pounds to their car all right so uh <laughs> on my notes i have one more footnote um you and your wife melanie are expecting twins later. yeah that could change your race. Yeah, season. yeah. Now, why did you say that? <laughs> yeah, I got to read this on my on my last note. Yeah. I got to read this. Are you Brad kidding me? Right. When are they due? Well, they're they're <laughs> due in uh, early September, but with twins, uh, I'm told that they go a little bit sooner okay. with that. So that's so, that's late August. That could get in the way of a that, definitely. 
so there's that, you know, um, there's, there's weddings. Like, this wasn't the year to chase points. It just wasn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. so. But you just never know when that's going to happen. Ex- yeah, but... Uh, so maybe you'll go with the flow. Yeah, well, we've been fast before. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, maybe down the road I'll, I'll have another opportunity, you know, in a few years. But I've got great sponsors. Jeff Desharnay from Interstate Batters has been yeah. a big supporter of ours ever since, um, ever since we won the Gobbler at Accord. He came on board and... We won the hard clay the following race at here, uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, new sponsors, Our Wood and Sun General Contracting. They help us with tires. Uh, Superior Surfacing came on board this year. Uh, Wicked Truck Works is a sponsor yeah, of ours. Yes. So, um, yeah, Champion Oil. There's been a lot of people that have helped us and keep us doing it. It's affordable right now. So in the yeah. sportsman division, and they're and they're all flexible with you as far as what, what might or might not happen. I don't know that they know that actually. Okay. <laughs> so, so hopefully they're watching. They, yeah. they get some, bre- well, some breaking then. news here yeah. tonight, right? Uh, actually, well, they know you have twins, though. Uh, we, my my wife Melly and I just kind of told people recently. Wow. So Ooh, it's, Brad, you let the cat out of there. Yeah. I did. Our Why? office, our script is <laughs> spot on, man. Who wrote the script? <laughs> I already have a two-year-old. Uh, he'll be too soon as Maddox, and he's already, uh, he comes to the shop three nights a week. Oh, I got he's going to want a cart. Yeah, he's I already have him. A cart. I already Yay. have a kid cart for him. He really? can't drive it for three years, but it's a top-of-line really? kid cart. Yeah. Uh, that's excellent, man. Yeah. That's very Absolutely. cool. Well, cool. congratulations. Thank That's you. exciting news. Thank you and very much. Hopefully, it will fit around racing season. Yeah, hopefully, it all plays out the way it's supposed yeah. to, right? Yeah, yeah hopefully. So we appreciate you. Really appreciate you being here. You guys got any questions for us? Anything you want to add on to the show? No. Nope. Just Joe's one of the nicest guys and a great racer. That's our comment. One, one I, question. I, I agree. I, I didn't know him before tonight, and I agree. I have questions for Brett. Yeah, ask away. Uh, I saw the picture of you and Roger Penske at Nazareth. So how did that? What, what was that? Uh, so um, Roger Penske owned Nazareth. He, okay. he was the owner of the track. Okay. And um, I had just it was 1990, and I had just been doing some NASCAR racing. So he knew my name from being in NASCAR, and I knew some of the people that were were, were running the track for him in mm-hmm. Nazareth. And he walked over to me, and we started talking. Cool. We just. You know, he's he's the man. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Definitely. It's pretty, you know, and actually, I, um, I I did I saw the same picture recently too, and I yeah. thought, man, I, I forgot I forgot all about that. Yeah, you know. Then but, another, uh, another thing, twenty I think twenty years ago, it was like I think it was the race at Kings. I was, I was with Kenny Baker in the pits. I think you won it. You're walking out of the racetrack in your suit, just heading out, and uh, Kenny stopped you and you started talking to him, and uh, he knew I was a giant fan of yours and. Uh, like this he, is at Lebanon Valley? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Kenny, we were leaving, and uh, he's like, Brett, Brett, calls him over, Kenny, you know, just come on. And I uh, call him Seeger. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and he's like, you know, talking, and he's like, hey, you sign something for him? Sign, sign something for him. I'm like, I, I don't have anything. And what did you whip out? And he brought this, it with him. This gear chart. 20 years ago. That is cool. There it is. Is it authentic? Yeah. Brett, verify the signature. 23, <laughs> one underneath that. Yeah. About that, yeah, awesome. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so know. I brought a picture from Victory Lane the other night. I was hoping you'd sign it again. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. We can do it. That's a way to end it. We can do it. Awesome. Oh, great show, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah thanks Thank a lot, you, Christina. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate Thank you staying. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank so you. So far with your points and to new two beautiful new babies. Yep. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we keep racing. Boys or girls. <laughs> Two boys. Two boys. Two oh, boys. you're going to need a lot of carts. I've got a pick crew. <laughs> Holy race team, <laughs> <Holy race, laughs> yeah. man. He's got labor. He's got laborers, yeah. everyone. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, after Bristol. And hopefully good you're all here. Yeah, good, good luck to Brett. Good luck this weekend. Much. We'll miss you. If you, you win, how many wins is that? 920. Awesome. Magic number. <laughs> <laughs> I got two chances. Cool.